Hey viewers, my name's Kara, and on December 18th, I posted on Twitter and Facebook saying that I was gonna do another question and answer video because I had said a while ago, like last year or something, when I did the last one, that I was gonna do another one. Haven't gotten around to doing it. And then Tyler Oakley did one, which reminded me that I wanted to do one, so I posted on Twitter and Facebook, and I didn't get any questions on Twitter. I got a couple on Facebook. Last time I did a Q&A video, I posted a video on YouTube asking you to ask me questions, and I got a lot more questions then. This time I didn't get that many, but I'm going to answer the ones that I got on Facebook, and I'm just letting you be aware that if you're not following me on any of those other social media that you may have and you're interested in doing so, there are links in the descriptions of my new videos to everything, like my Twitter, my Facebook page, my blogger blogs. I have two, one about the witchy stuff and one about t-shirt reconstruction and DIY fashion, which I don't update as much as I should, but I'm going to. My Etsy shop, which doesn't have anything on it right now because I'm going to revamp it in the new year. I got to get everything kind of going again. But anyway, so please just be aware that I do post on those places. I post some pictures on Twitter that don't necessarily end up in other places because I do that from my phone. If I'm not making videos, I am posting things on Facebook or Twitter and all those other places. So I blog, things like that. So if you would like to follow me in any of those places, please make sure that you do so, so that you can find out the next time that I'm going to do something like this. So there's just a few questions on Facebook. So first, from Courtney, she says, I feel like you'll probably only answer this question when you feel like getting around to it since you mentioned it in your most recent video, but just in case, where do you work? I was waiting to tell you guys where I worked until I kind of knew that it was a set thing because at first it was a come in, try it, see if you like it. So I wasn't really sure if it was going to remain a permanent thing, but I've been working there for four months now and I absolutely adore my job. I think it's one of the cutest jobs I could ever have and I really like it. My bosses are great, my coworkers are great, the environment is just so fun. It's really hectic sometimes, but it's one of those things where at the end of the day, kind of get back to square one and I just really feel like I fit there. So for those of you who don't know, I have a degree in theater and I am doing some work in theater, but that's not my main day job right now. I do work in the theater over the summers and I actually recently got cast in a show. I mentioned to you guys recently that I had, uh, had auditioned. I got cast in that show. That'll be in the spring. So I'll be doing that, but my main day job is that I am a server at a tea parlor, right? How adorable is that? It's absolutely not, you know, your everyday kind of job that I thought I would be having and I sort of just came across this opportunity and I absolutely love it. And then my secondary job is that I am a personal care assistant for one of my friends and I help her cleaning her house, running errands, picking up her kids, you know, going with her to different things and appointments, whatever she needs me to do. So those are my jobs right now. Marta has a lot of questions for me, but I didn't get that many questions, so I'm going to answer them all. First, do you have any esoteric or occult book recommendations that you enjoyed recently or want to read yourself. I actually have a blog post on my The Witchy Stuff blog about my book recommendations. So instead of listing them all right here, I'm just going to put a link on the screen. I'll put a link in the description to my blog post. And I'm actually updating that as I go. So as I read a new book that I want to recommend, I'm adding that to the blog post. I started it a while ago, but I'm updating it as I go. So definitely my top ones are on there. The most recent book that I've added to that list is Modern Pagans, which is a series of interviews by V. Vale and John Sulak, and it covers a bunch of different paths of paganism, a bunch of different famous pagans and pagans that I'd never heard of before, and it's just so much information. I absolutely love that book. I got it at the Half Price Bookstore. I highly recommend it. But there are other ones on that blog as well. The next question, what changes, if any, have you noticed in the pagan community on YouTube over your time in it. Oh, I should have probably looked at these questions ahead of time and prepared answers. Well, when I first kind of joined the pagan community on YouTube, it seemed a lot smaller to me because I only sort of got to know, there were kind of like the two big names when you searched anything pagan or Wiccan related, and I'm pretty sure you guys know who I'm talking about, so I don't even have to say it. There were sort of like two or three really big names, and then I just kind of came into it and I met um, Kyle who started the Pagan Perspective with me. I met Dancing Rabbit and Feather through that process and starting the Pagan Perspective. So as I started Pagan Perspective with Kyle and got more into that and just kind of putting myself out there and responding to other people's things, even though I never got personal responses from those big name pagans that were on YouTube, making the responses opened me up to their audiences and then it just sort of blossomed and I met so many more 
pagan YouTubers or YouTube pagans or whatever we are. So in that way the community changed, but also I just feel like it went a lot more from when I started my perception of it was, okay, there's these really big pagan YouTubers and then there's a bunch of us little ones, to now it really feels a lot more like an equal level community, like a round table, like we're all here, we're all in it, it's not really so much in tiers where like everybody's looking up to these few people. It's really kind of like more meshed community now and I really like that. And I know that I haven't even stayed in touch with a lot of people that I've been meaning to catch up with more. There's so many of us and I want to know everyone and I want to learn from everyone. It's just so difficult. So yeah, I think that's the biggest change that I really, in my perception. What are your dreams and aspirations right now and have they changed over your lifetime? And if yes, what were they previously? My dreams and aspirations right now, oh my gosh. Okay, well, as I mentioned, I have a degree in theater. So one of my dreams and aspirations is, of course, to do something with that really concretely. I wanna be able to act professionally. I'd love to direct or teach theater or just something really integrated, hands-on with theater I would love to do. But that's been a dream and aspiration of mine for a while, sort of since high school. The biggest thing I think that's changed over time is just that I still have that, but now I really am a lot more concerned with my religious aspect and what I want to do with the pagan community at large. And so now my dreams and aspirations really include, as well as the theater aspect and as well as just kind of being happy in general and doing what I want to do with my life and feeling like I'm making a positive difference in the world, I've added on to that, really wanting to be involved in the pagan community locally and nationally and globally you know as much as I can and do something with that because that is really important to me so for example in 2014 I have several trips planned to meet some of my pagan YouTube friends and hang out with them and to attend different pagan events but I'll tell you more about that as it comes up but there's some really exciting things going on and I just hope to have even more opportunities in that realm. And lastly from Marta, what are your goals and plans, if any, for 2014? I actually did post on Facebook about the Yule ritual that I did with my circle. It was a very small group. Not a lot of people showed up. It was basically just me and my friend and my coworker and my friend's daughter. But we actually talked about our goals uh, for 2014. So I can tell you that some of mine include looking for a new place to live, moving into an apartment. I'm in uh, the basement at my brother's dad's house right now, which is where I'm filming from. I live over there in that corner. <laughs> So I would really love to move. I would really love to, like I said, do more traveling and meeting people and becoming more involved in the pagan community. I just want to kind of be more financially independent. I want to get back into doing more stuff with Etsy and YouTube and having a better set schedule, which I think moving will really help me with because I won't live as far away from work. I won't spend as much time just driving back and forth to the things that I do every day. So I'm really looking forward to kind of being more settled, spending more time with people. Yeah, there's a lot. So thank Thank you, Marta, for all of those good questions. Next, Jerry, one of my good friends online, but I consider a lot of you good friends. He says every once in a while he sees one of my older videos and he's amazed because he can look at my face and see how much I've grown between then and now. So the question is, how much of a stranger is the younger Kara to me? When I watch my old videos, I'm really taken aback just because the the quality is so different and I had braces then, so I looked different then, but also the quality of my videos was a lot horror then because I have this new camera now and everything and my editing software. I've clearly gotten used to speaking to the camera more over the years. But as far as, you know, away from things like just what the videos looked like, as far as who I actually was then and who I am now, I'm not so much of a stranger to myself, but there are a lot of things that I'll watch, like the really early Pagan Perspective videos, and I'll think, oh wow, I kind of, you know, my views are pretty much the same, but I've sort of expanded my views a little bit. I think a little bit more openly now even than I did then, just because over the years I've met so many other people um, in the pagan community or in the whatever LGBT community, the DIY fashion community, whatever. I've learned a lot of things from people that have added to my worldview. I've just sort of, I watch myself getting more and more open and learning more and more things. And the other day I was actually thinking about, you know, who I am as a person, a physical solid person right here, not just in videos, but I've noticed myself just sort of being really different in a lot of ways like it doesn't feel different but I just noticed like oh wow I've really made progress in that over the years I made a video a while ago where I mentioned things like I used to get really nervous when driving in highly trafficked areas and I would have panic attacks if something went wrong and now I just kind of 
take a deep breath, then roll with the punches kind of thing, and things like being confronted by people in public about my religion, telling me that I'm going to hell or whatever. I was always pretty good with that kind of thing, but I've just see myself getting better and better at it. So the younger Kara isn't so much a stranger to me, but I definitely have noticed some expansion and growth over the years that I really like. Christian asks, how do you feel about mixing pantheons like Hindu gods in Wicca, etc.? I personally don't feel so badly about it. I know, however, that there are a lot of people who would be kind of upset with that because they think, you know, like, why, for example, a better example to me would be, like, why would you honor the Hindu gods using a Greek ritual? Or something like that. But to me, since you asked about Wicca, and again, some people would disagree with this, but to me, I feel like Wicca is a pretty good structure that sort of applies to any pantheon that you feel comfortable working with. Like, there is no specific Wiccan pantheon, and now, yes, there were specific deities that Gardner worked with when he started the whole kind of thing. Not that he called what he was doing Wicca, but that's a different discussion, but I feel like Wicca is a little bit more open to, you know, you can honor the Greek gods in a Wiccan format, you can honor the Egyptian gods in a Wiccan format, so I personally feel a little bit more comfortable with that than, as I said, honoring the Egyptian gods in a Norse ritual format or something like that. But to me, overall, the end result for me is that if it feels like it works to you and it's the best for you and you truly feel like you're getting something out of it, then I don't see why you shouldn't be able to do it if it's not harming anyone or anything. Shuai, I think maybe your name is pronounced, um, asks favorite childhood TV shows, food you hate, favorite teachers. Favorite childhood TV shows, I watched the Care Bears, like the original. I was born in 1990, but you know, they still played them, so I watched Care Bears, the old My Little Pony, Rugrats, you know, all of the typical kind of 90s cartoon shows, loved those. Food that I hate is really difficult because I used to really not like onions, mushrooms, and tomatoes, but now that I'm trying to eat vegan, I have developed much more of a taste for tomatoes and mushrooms I discovered I love. I don't know how I ever went through like not liking them at all. I love mushrooms now. And onions I'm still not a huge fan of, but I wouldn't say I hate them. Hate is a strong word. Oh, I don't like things like I went to England and made the mistake of ordering pickle on a sandwich. Yeah, no. Favorite teachers. My French teacher in high school was really special to me, as well as my AP English teacher. Some of my teachers from elementary school actually came into the tea parlor like last month or something, and I served them, and that was interesting. But generally, my favorite teachers have been people who really made the subject matter that I was learning creative and fun, and I mean, they happen to be subjects that I liked anyway, English and French, for those two examples. But they just tended to be people that I really identified with, and I don't know, they're just like, cool people. Sonia and Michelle, not that you'll probably ever see this, but I love you, you guys know it. And then I just realized that because you said teachers, I thought about high school because in my mind, college is professors. So I also have favorite professors. That's pretty much the entire theater department that kind of raised me, I feel, that brought me up uh, in who I am as an actor throughout college. I just freaking love all of them, and my writing professors, and my English professors, and my psych professor. Oh my gosh, Dr. M, the one who helped me with my pagan prejudice research. I always still love talking to her about new things that I'm learning about prejudice. Yeah, I have a lot of favorite professors. And then Cece had a question about shows and movies that portray witchcraft and paganism, both good and bad portrayals. Do the shows bug me, or am I okay with them? Cece, I have to let you know, along with everyone else, that I am planning a video series about media representations of witches, and it's been a long time coming, and I promise it is coming. I actually have notes for it. I have documents on my computer now where I am taking notes and getting my thoughts together so that when I have the time or when I feel like I have the space, because I want it to, like, look nice, nice, I want it to be a little bit of a production, like you're watching a show a little bit, then I'll have everything together and I can just kind of crank them out and post them, but I have done some videos about it in the past. I have a video about True Blood Season 4 and how I feel about the representation of those witches and Marnie and Holly. But to give you a very general answer, sometimes they bug me, but really what bugs me most is knowing that there are some people out there who think think that that's what we think we are, if that makes sense. But for a person who is educated about witchcraft or paganism, like just enjoying it myself or for my friends or you guys in the pagan community watching them, I don't think the shows are that bad. I think they're enjoyable. I think we like them. We are entertained by them. The people 
doing the shows do a very good job of it so the only aspect of it that bugs me is when it's not accurate and knowing that other people won't know that it's not accurate because they don't know enough about what it really is in real life but I will be doing that media representation series and there are a ton of shows and movies on that list so when that comes around, I hope you'll watch it and enjoy. Those are all the questions that I got this past week, so thank you very much for watching. This was a longer video than I intended. You know me, I'm pretty long-winded, so maybe I should only keep it to about 10 to 12 questions every time or less. I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to be awesome, blessed be, and goodbye.